Hello, my name is uh, Martin Voss. I'm a medical oncologist at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York. Um, my uh, clinical area of expertise is treatment of metastatic uh, kidney cancers. Today, I was asked to tell you about a clinical trial that my um, center is participating in. This is the DART study, and we're going to look through some slides here that I've put together to summarize what this clinical trial is about and what we have learned on it uh, so far based on a presentation that was given at the annual ASCO meeting uh, earlier this year. So this is a randomized study that is testing a approved medication, exitinib, uh, in combination with a novel investigational agent called Delantercept in patients with metastatic uh, kidney cancer who have uh, had prior treatments. If we go to the second slide, uh, you can see here by uh, way of background that the standard of care for managing metastatic kidney cancer in 2014 is really the use of so-called targeted therapies, um, medications that work by inhibiting what we believe to be molecular mechanisms that are important for kidney cancer cell growth. If we understand the biology of the tumor cells, then we can find ways to inhibit that. And you can see that the majority of the agents that are presently FDA approved in the United States work by blocking signaling through VEGF, the vascular endothelial growth factor, and essentially work by blocking blood vessel growth, which we know is of principal importance to kidney cancer biology. We um, uh, have a number of these medications that are quite effective, uh, but unfortunately uh, do not work for every patient, and for those patients that do have a good response, durations are not always uh, durable, meaning uh, that cancer cells can grow despite of these medications. Um, so we see a cartoon here that uh, illustrates uh, how patients um, can experience progression of their cancer despite being treated with these blood vessel um, inhibitor agents. <clears throat> In the top part uh, of this image, you can see that some patients have a good response where um, blood vessel growth is effectively inhibited and tumors shrink, but eventually the tumors find ways uh, around the medication, develop other um, mechanisms of uh, building new blood supplies. At the bottom part of the uh, imagery here, you see that some patients never quite respond to these treatments at all, which essentially means that their tumors build blood vessels uh, through other molecular mechanisms than the ones that we are um, inhibiting with the medication. So if we go back then to look at all the medications that are approved, uh, we have to think about ways to treat patients um, for which the first agent we have tried has uh, have, uh, failed. And I've highlighted here for you a medication called Exitinib, which is ex um, approved in patients who have previously had other uh, medications, primarily blood vessel inhibitors. So the um, large trial that led to the approval of Exitinib was conducted uh, in only in patients who had been on other medications, uh, meaning Exitinib was proven to be effective uh, even when other um, VGF inhibitors had uh, failed. So that is a, our present approach to these patients using other medications in that setting. And uh, um, if we want to improve upon that principle, then maybe we have to go back and look at the biology of uh, these ca cancers again and understand blood vessel growth better. So here we have a cartoon that shows you that blood vessel growth is uh, obviously a very intricate process that happens in different stages. The medications that we use all work through VEGF, which is really most important for the initial stages. Tumors secrete these factors to initiate growth of new blood vessels, which you see in step one and then step two. But once these blood vessels have grown, there are various other molecular mechanisms that are important for the maturation of these new blood vessels. And that is presently not uh, addressed with the medications that we have approved. So approved medications really uh, block steps one and two um, and maybe it is time that we try to look into novel approaches to also interfere with uh, the later stages of blood vessel growth. Here's where we come to talk about the investigational agent in this trial. The Lantercept is a medication that does not target blood vessel growth by VEGF. It targets it through another molecular mechanism, so from a different angle, so to say. Uh, the ALK1 pathway is a uh, molecular signaling uh, pathway that is important for maturation of newly formed blood vessels. Um, the Lantercept on its own has been tested in clinical trials across a number of various, uh, across a number of malignancies, and it's been found to be effective uh, and safe in uh, many different cancers. Um, so if we go back to our cartoon then, 
uh, talking about patients who have experienced failure to their initial uh, treatment with blood vessel inhibitors, the present approach would be to use medications like Exitinib that have been shown to be effective by using a very similar approach to the first medication the patient had been on, meaning blocking VEGF again. Uh, an alternative approach might be to use a medication like the Lantercept that blocks blood vessel growth from a different angle. That said, maybe we could be even more effective if we took a more aggressive route and actually combined these two approaches together. And that's what this clinical trial is exploring. So combining ALK1 and VEGF inhibition, we argue, might be more effective than doing uh, the two either um, alone or in sequence. And this has been tested and proven to be successful in laboratory experiments for kidney cancer and other models. One thing that is important whenever we consider combining two different medications is do these medications have similar side effect profiles, meaning if you give two medications and that each by themselves you know, cause one side effect, then you might see a lot of that side effect if you combine them uh, together. So that is something we try to avoid. And it's important to note that the Lantercept actually has a side effect profile that is different uh, from that of uh, the medications we presently have approved. Um, so it's a good candidate for combination with medications like Exitinib. And um, ultimately, we're hopeful that this might be more effective to overcome the resistance to VEGF-targeted therapy that patients have developed than just using another VEGF-targeted agent like Exitinib alone. So that leads us to the actual trial that we're discussing today. So the DART study is a phase two randomized double-blind study that compares the combination of this new medication, Delantercept, and the approved medication, Exitinib. It's a placebo-controlled trial. So in this trial, there are patients who are getting Delantercept plus Exitinib, and there are patients who are getting a placebo together with the Exitinib. What's important to point out is that every single patient going on this trial is receiving exitinib therapy, so no one is receiving placebo alone. Here we have an overview of the study design, and this uh, study is being conducted in two parts. The, the first part is actually already completed, and we are now enrolling to the second part. The first part was a phase one segment that essentially um, was designed to determine the optimal dosing schedule for combining these two agents to make sure that it was safe to give them together and to find out how exactly one best gives them in combination. That information is now um, available to us and has uh, helped us to design the second part, uh, which is now um, the randomized piece, uh, giving patients the combination versus Exitin plus uh, placebo. We do know um, a lot about the combination at this point, given the part one that we have already completed. And uh, uh, Dr. Atkins from Georgetown University, one of the participating investigators on this trial, presented some of this data at the um, 2014 ASCO meeting in Chicago. So I'm ha I have a quick overview for you here. So part one has uh, treated 26 patients with this combination. Uh, we found this overall to be uh, well, reasonably well tolerated by patients. The most common side effect uh, for the combination was fatigue. Other side effects that we did note are listed here, diarrhea, mild impairment of kidney function. There was no one with a serious kidney failure on this uh, uh, part one segment. Uh, lower extremity swelling, uh, which we believe is probably an effect of the Delantercept, something we don't typically see with the Exitinib. Hoarseness, mild intermittent nosebleeds, GI uh, distress, uh, cough, and worsening of hypertension. Uh, which is a very common side effect of Exitinib. One thing that is important to make, that's the last bullet on this slide, is that the Exitinib toxicity profile that we are used to seeing, this being a standard medication that we use in our patients all the time, was not exacerbated by the addition of the Lantercept, meaning we did see the typical Exitinib side effect. We did not see them at higher frequencies or at uh, worse intensity. Uh, we do have some sense for uh, the activity uh, of this combination. Obviously, we did uh, report the anti-tumor efficacy for these first uh, patients treated on the trial. This is uh, available for 20 patients. That's fine. You can see uh, that there are patients with uh, partial responses uh, seen on the study. Many patients, more than 50% of the population on this trial had extended disease control on this trial. So certainly, this would be considered very promising early data. It makes us uh, excited to bring patients onto the second part of the study. 
Uh, we have an overview here of part two now. So this is a trial uh, that is presently open at 13 sites within the U.S. We plan to expand to various other sites. Likely about 40 uh, hospitals in total will be accruing patients uh, to this. Patients to be considered for this study uh, would be those with uh, renal cell carcinoma with predominant clear cell phenotype, so predominantly clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Patients can have had one line of prior targeted therapies which should be either sunitinib or pazopinib. These are the two most commonly used agents in uh, the first-line setting. Patients can be considered if they've had prior immunotherapy, such as IL-2 or a, a newer immune therapy on a clinical trial. This is a large trial. It will enroll about 130 patients that will be randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive either the combination of exitinib plus the Vantercept or standard exitinib with placebo. Uh, this randomization will be conducted by a computer. This will be blinded, meaning neither the treating physician nor the patients will know whether they are on the injection for the lantercept um, or the placebo. Exitinib is an oral medication that is uh, administered by mouth on a twice-daily schedule. Patients do that at home. The lantercept is an injection medication that is given by injection under the skin. We call that a subcutaneous injection in the office every three weeks. For patients that are randomized to the placebo arm, uh, an injection under the skin is essentially just a, a, a carrier solution without uh, medication. The study endpoints for this is obviously now looking into the, uh, the question whether exitinib alone um, versus exitinib plus the lantercept uh, is different in terms of uh, how well disease is controlled and how long patients uh, can stay on one treatment until they sequence to the next. Uh, eligibility, I have mentioned, uh, again, this uh, is to be predominantly clear cell. Patients must have measurable disease, uh, meaning uh, there must be something on scans that we can follow to assess the response uh, that is uh, measurable by research, uh, by research standards. Um, and again, patients must have been pre-treated with either sunitinib or pazopinib. They can have had one of these agents and an immunotherapy before. There are some considerations in terms of other medical history that we include for safety purposes, and those are listed here also. For those uh, listeners that are interested to learn more about the trial, as usual, clinicaltrials.gov is a um, terrific resource. The study identifying number is listed here and can be uh, entered into the search field in clinicaltrials.gov to identify the study, find participating centers, including phone numbers to uh, arrange for um, consultations, ask more questions. The eligibility criteria and so forth are also listed on this governmental website. Thank you very much for your kind attention and have a good day.